Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we're going to take a look at Third Rate's Squadron from Black Seas. This is uh, slightly bigger ships than the frigates, which I've got a frigate here for comparison and a brig. Here we go. A little brig. So what we'll do is after we kind of look here, we'll kind of see how scale-wise that fits in with the existing ships. They're supposed to be a little bit bigger. That's what I want. I'm slowly working my way up to larger ships. So I'm hoping the next thing will be doing uh, the first rate ships. So third rate, here we go. Now because I'm paying for these out of pocket, this was out of pocket, it takes a while for me to, you know, get all the new stuff. So if you have or know or can get, <laughs> if you want to send me some first rate ships, that'd be great. Because that would make this so much easier trying to get this stuff to the channel to show people. Because what I want to do, and I haven't really seen a whole lot of folks constructing these things on, on YouTube. And that's, I'm like, that's like the funnest part. Um, of all the World War II stuff, I've actually enjoyed the Age of Sail ships the most. Actually painting them and rigging them and making them look like something has been really exciting. And uh, so I'm hoping, you know, put a few more ships out there for folks to look at. So here comes the third rates. I'm just gonna set the box aside. Three, three ships. So just looking at the contents, you get three, and it looks like you can paint them up. So you got either, you know, possibly you got this, the flags for French, British, Spanish, but of course, these are generic. And so you can set them up as you want for any nation. And then it's got the wake templates, the battle cards, lots of bobbins, which is great, and then the sails and the rat lines, all good to go, perfect. In fact, I think the third rates, these are the models that they use in the book when they were showing how to do rigging and some painting and stuff, so uh, very cool. We're gonna get slightly bigger ships now. Here's the third rate, there's the sprue. Oh, yeah, already. I'm loving the side. I'm loving all the guns. That's why I want to get first rate, because that's totally classic, but we're talking third rate today. Little bit more, yeah, a little more detail. I like this. On the frigate, this upper piece, and then these parts here, uh, a lot of this is all one piece, so you, you can see down into the hold but it was you know, just all one solid piece. So already this has got a little more um, complication, I guess, to it. I don't know, a little more detail. And I like building models, so that's cool. You got the four pieces, the two whole pieces, the mass again are a single casting, this back part here for, what is that, the mizzen? Mizzen? Bows, I don't know, I don't remember now. <laughs> I don't remember. And the back has got a couple of pieces too. And the front. It looks like you can make the front a couple different ways. The figurehead, the bowsprit here. And this actually talks about the anchors. So I'll probably put anchors. I haven't put anchors on anything yet, but they probably need anchors. So we'll put anchors. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. But all in all, it doesn't look that much more complicated. So here's all the, the bits right here. So we'll just do a quick look here. Oh, thank you, Vaz, Vaz, for packing that. I appreciate that. This is a nice touch. The starter set didn't have, have this. I think they had like the stuff in a bag, but not who packed it. So this is very good. Black Seas, Rat Net, well, yeah, the Rat Lines. Okay, I, I said Rat Nest, but Rat Lines. There's my packed, appreciate that, buddy. Friend pal, the wake markers. You got three of them. With your clips, your cards. And again, all really nice, good quality cards. You can actually, if you had dry erase, mark on these. That way, if you weren't liking the clips, you could just dry erase and circle damage and things like that. 
the sales. I'll be honest, my wife and I have experimented with a couple different ways to do sales. I think the only other way I have left to try it as an alternative to these is actually, oh, that that's where we're going to get. She's going to get something called muslin, which is like a really thin uh, fabric. And then we were going to try using muslin. We just haven't ordered any yet. Uh, but why why not these cardboard cells? I think they're, they're fine overall when you get there, but it was like, they look like, don't quite look like cloth necessarily. So I was just experimenting with that. But if all else fails, we'll just fall back to using these. No big deal. And then, ooh, the first signs of US flags. Nice, so you can make, it's got privateers and then the merchant flags. Uh, down here, Merchant Flags, Privateers, and then U.S. So, U.S. Flags. That's very cool. Because I did paint up a couple ships in the style of the U.S. Navy. There's one of the U.S. frigates. They didn't have first-rate ships, but it's kind of cool. So, I could actually maybe stick a, an American flag on there. But the thing is, I didn't want to do permanent attachments. Because, again, depending on what scenario you play, you know, you might want to say well this actually is a Spanish for this but anyway you got your British flags and French flags some pirate flags pirate flags here as well different style of pirate flags and then the uh, Spanish and then signal flags so awesome that's very cool I I like that American flags for me I think it's going to be a fun thing to put together. I did a little tutorial on how I was shown to do the flags using tinfoil. I just haven't posted it yet. Um, so, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll post it. And then we can all do flags together. Alright, so we're going to look at a sprue here. Now, there's your two sides. Lots of cannons. Oh, I'm loving that. That's great. Uh, there's parts of the, the front. There's looking down into the hold. So it's going to have a couple pieces. There it is. Now the only drawback will be painting this. Once I have it assembled, getting down in here to paint that, because that is some additional detail, that, that might be a bit of a problem. Yeah. Mm, we'll figure it out. I'll still assemble it. And then, you know, I'll, I'll figure something out. We'll, we'll get it painted. Uh, trust me, once you put the sails and the masts and everything, there's no boat. Yeah, there's boats. Once you put a boat or two, it's going to be really hard to look down into the main hold anyway. So we, we might not have a problem with that. All right, so we got the assembly instructions. See, now, beyond just an unboxing and here's contents, we're going to build it. So let's build this thing. All right, uh, I'm going to grab my clippers and I've had these for so long they're actually broken but they still work I thought about upgrading to maybe like some games workshop clippers but games workshop stuff isn't always the cheapest price so then it's like well I'll just keep using these they work Okay, there's one side. And there's the other side. And then I need this inside here that we were talking about just now. Yeah, and I mean, shoot, if, if I had really thought about this, I would paint this now and do the little shading on there, but nope. All right, and then I need this triangular front piece. And then we'll then we'll trim them up a little bit, get rid of some of the excess plastic off. And then I need I think it's this one right there. All right, we're gonna clean these up just a little bit. Still using Exacto Blade. I haven't promoted myself up to using a like a sanding stick or anything like that. So, 
but this hasn't been too bad. And a lot of these pieces, because they, of where they sit, you don't always get that close to examine, you know, how I clean them up. I just clean them up because it does help the pieces stick to better together because you get rid of the connection points to the sprue. So that can help these fit together a little bit better. And then once you paint it, a lot of the imperfections that you introduce kind of go away, you know, trying to clean it up. I know you would think cleaning it up, you're not introducing imperfections, but what happens, I'll show you. Now with a sanding stick might be different, but what I have here, and you might not be able to see it though, is that's where the nub was that connects it to the sprue. So even though it is now flat, you can kind of see where the, the plastic was. But once you paint, that kind of stuff all disappears and you'll never see it. But getting rid of those little nubs and things make these pieces fit together better. All right, so that's two down. I was watching YouTube videos about rigging and you get some folks that do these ships all in wood. And that is an amazing experience to watch is how these folks take just sticks of wood and actually put ships like this together. Uh, wow. I don't think I would ever have the patience to do that. All right, that was trimmed down. I can't remember where all the, I think it was connected here at these two spots. So trim right there and right here. And then the ship models they build, some of them are large enough that when they do the rigging, like for me, the rigging is pretty basic, but these folks actually fold actual knots, sailor knots and things like that, just in a small scale. And that's also very impressive. I have not graduated to that. Okay, that one's clean. That one is clean. Now, I just gotta remember where it connected on top here, right? Here is one. That's clean. Yeah, right here. So this wasn't too bad. I'm already looking for the holes for running the the rigging. So we've got a hole here, here, and here. One thing I've learned too is this might be large enough now, the acetate might be large enough that when you're placing it on these runner boards or the like here. It'll place on this front running board very well, the rat lines, because they like attach to it and then run up to the mast. But you get down here where the cannons are, and if you have to run your rat lines, these might be large, I put it away, but I might be able to actually cut out on the bottom so that the acetate fits around the cannons. The frigates, I didn't try that with, or the brigs, because I thought they were just a little too small but I might be able to actually cut the rat lines so that when you look at it, they're not, they're not sitting, you know, covering up the cannon. So the cannon's not shooting through the acetate. Um, but I might be able to actually trim, trim the uh, acetate now to make them look really nice. So I am excited to try, try some things on these larger ships. That's why I really want to get some first-rate ships, but uh, my wife also said I can't buy anything else till after Christmas. So for the next month, unless something comes in the mail from something I've ordered earlier, like a Kickstarter or something, uh, there won't be any new, new product videos or anything like that. It's going to all be dealing with stuff I currently have. So if anybody wants to send a Christmas present... So I can do a unboxing or construction or something like that. Let me know and I'll give you my shipping address and then we can put keep putting brand brand new stuff out. All right. Well, this one I'm having a hard time seeing all the little connection points. 
but that's going to be covered up by the sides of the ship. So those, those pieces are done. We're ready to assemble. Now I've got the instructions here, so a few items fit up under here, so I'll probably glue those first. And how is this going to fit? Now I don't know if these are set up to go in a certain way, or I just choose what looks best. Okay, it actually kind of has a, you can barely see it, there's a little bit of an outline in the plastic where this the hold is going to fit and I'm looking at the picture because I want to make sure I put it in it looks like the part with this nub there's a little nub in there that that seems to fit towards the back so if I've got the front here and turn it this way all right and I'm just going to set it down into this little area that they have kind of carved. Grab the glue. This is my Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. This stuff is great. I know there's a lot of different plastic glues. I just haven't experimented with many. Pretty much just this one. In a few seconds and it starts to cure. And then give it a few hours and then once it's dry it's like welded the plastic together. So the Tamiya glue is really amazing. So there, there's that one. Now, it looks like, uh, oh, I got a piece of plastic to trim off here that I didn't see before. So let me trim this plastic before I, oh, hopefully that's gonna be covered up. Otherwise, that's really ugly looking. Now, I hold some things closer to me. Let me move the camera. There we go. That way, if I hold something towards me, like down here, you can see it. Hopefully, this gives you a better view of the crafting space. All right, so this is going to go here. It looks like it fits right around in here. So we're just going to put some glue. that sink down and we're going to put a little bit under and this glue just seeps down into the cracks and crevices and then welds everything together so I'm just going to hold that in place for a moment and it's done now I was also watching some professional model builders where they would probably putty in and then sand down so there's like no gap but this is going to be on the inside and I'm not that dedicated to the craft so we're not going to putty the stuff that's not going to be seen spoiler I'm not going to putty anything now I'm going to put these together because it looks like from the picture I gotta put this this is going to sit in here because that's where the bowsprit's going to sit so it's a matter of just getting things to line up And that's the only drawback because this has no, no pins or holes to, to kind of fit it together. So I'm going to have to kind of just guess here a little bit. And I think what I will do though is I'm going to just pre-fit, drop a dab of glue there, let that set up a little bit, and then come back here and do the same. Let the glue work its magic. And I'll put more glue in a little bit. But what that will let me do, as long as I don't put my head in the way, is I can line these up. I have it laying flat on the table, so they're, you know, should be even. And then I've lined up the front and the back as best I can. So this is going to hold that. Now we're going to put this in. And it fits right in here. So now it's just a matter of lining these parts up. And it looks like there's little ridges to help hold this in place. So it's just a matter of getting it in here to sit proper. 
and it is not. So give me a moment here to manipulate. There we go. Got it. It is now in place. So we're going to glue that, and that's going to give this thing a lot more rigidity there. Put the glue in a couple spots so it will seep into the crevices. Perfect. Now we're going to take this and we're going to figure out how this goes. Uh, looks like it's got to go on the inside a little bit. So what I'm going to do is pry it apart in the back, leave the front together, and we're going to set this in here. And the sides are going to come together to kind of hold this in place. But I do have... What are those? I think those are the anchor points. So this kind of goes up, over, down. Okay, cool. We got it. So, yeah, the temporary gluing that I did in the back was just enough to hold this in place so I could, you know, fit things. They pried apart pried apart in the back because the glue hadn't fully uh, cured. So everything is together now. Now I can go ahead and glue it and just let it cure to hold permanently. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on the back here. And then I'm going to hold this and drop glue along the inside so we can glue the deck to the sides in a couple of different spots. Now if I had some rubber bands that would probably be really good to hold this together while I move on to something else. I don't have any rubber bands so I'm just going to hold this for a moment. I push it down against the table because again I want to make sure that it's you know uh, even across so when you sit on the table it's not crooked or anything like that and I think we're good so already I can tell this is going to be slightly larger than the frigates now here's here's the assembled completely assembled frigate it has basically one row of cannon and then it's got like some individual chasers on top and then this frigate has got two rows of cannons well the third rate two rows of cannons and then you know you got not quite a full third row but a couple chasers on top so I guess a person would almost argue three levels of cannons and then some individual chase carronades probably on the on the very top so definitely bring in some more firepower to the game good and like I said give that time that'll glue and the way that I paint these is I'll be spraying on kind of a deserty tan color and it'll spray down into the hole and just the natural shadows I think are going to be enough to uh, help give the inside when if you pick it up and look inside you'll be able to see that it is painted because it'll be spray painted in there a bit and then if I just take my brush and drop down some Argax earth shade that will also give the inside a little bit more shading and shadow and the way it seeps into the cracks you can then in see the individual paneling and it looks like wood and I've done that here on the frigates I don't know if I can hold this to the camera and the lighting just right but the it definitely looks like wooden decks I, I really like the outcome and the the shadows between the deck lines really helps that deck pop so you can see the individual panels of wood so I think this will look really, really good when it's done. All right, that's glued enough that I'm going to set it off to the side. It's pretty, pretty good now. But give that, like I said, a few hours to cure, and it will be virtually impossible to pull those parts, the pieces apart. So now we've got the three sails to do, or masts, I should say. That's where the sails attach. So I'm going to trim here. and trying not to break them. They're not super thick.
thin, but they are still fragile. So I just got to be very careful with cutting them from the sprue. Because with the different attach points, when you cut, it forces the plastic to, you're cutting, but it's like pushing the plastic away, which then causes some stress on other points of the model that are still connected to the sprue. So just always, always be careful, even when using your clipper. That's why I see some people separate their pieces from the sprue with like an X-Acto knife. And if you do, that's great. But you also still have to be careful because if you're pushing down, like let me show you on here. I don't have my cutting mat, so we'll just kind of show you here on this one. Just put the model part as close to the table as possible and it still puts some pressure on the model piece. So just kind of be careful. You know, whatever technique you use, it's just all about managing the stress of separating it from the sprue. And, and then luckily, the more points that you have cut away, the less stress there is as you get the rest of the model piece off. And then finally, this last point, nothing's connected, so it just pops off just nice. Had to get a drink. All right. So now we're going to trim these up. And these will probably be some of the last things that I glue in place, because when I paint, I'll have the model assembled and the masts will be in place, and then I put the, the primer coat down. Then I take the masts off to paint them individually, and it makes painting the ship a lot easier. And then I will assemble it when it's all painted, glue it in place, and then we can do the rigging. Now, painting is just painting them. If, if anybody wants me to do a painting video, let me know, because I got three ships. Usually what I do with, uh, I'll paint two, because I will do rigging with one, just to see how it is unique to that style of ship. That's what I did with the frigates and the brig. I rigged, I rigged one for practice, then we did one on camera. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna build and paint two of these, that way I can have one all rigged for practice and then rig one on camera. That will leave the third ship unpainted immediately. So if anybody wants to watch how I paint these, let me know. And I will do a painting video. I got no problem. These videos are an hour, hour and a half. No problem. You're the ones watching them. Or skipping through them. Okay, that mast is done. Do one more mast. Again, just trying to trim off as many of these connection points. That way, when you do prime it and paint it, and you look at the mast, you don't see a big old piece of plastic jutting out to where it shows how this connected to the uh, sprue. So, get those ugly marks off. Okay, bottom bit here. I thought there was more points of connection here, but I'm not seeing it. Well, if I prime it and then I see ugly pieces of plastic jutting out, I will trim it at that point. Now, Show us to insert the three and then attach these parts in the back to, to get the, the rear sail attached. So what I'm going to do is cut those out now and actually probably attach them. That's these two here.
Okay, and then I'll just trim those connection points down. Happy little connection points. Thank you, connection points, for holding the piece safely in the sprue for transportation. Thank you. Okay, and we'll do this one. Done. The bigger one goes on the bottom, and then the smaller one goes on top. And it's this one here. And you can tell right away it's this one because it's got little nubs that stick out that these things rest on. So we're going to, the bottom one is mostly straight. The thing is, I'm going to wait on attaching this. Oh, this fit in without glue. Yay. Let me see if this one will stay in place. Okay, those are going to stay in place without glue for a moment. Uh, the what I'm going to do, the reason I'm not going to glue it yet is because when you put these in, like you're supposed to, that's a snug fit. Let me... Oh, that's, that's going to be snug. But the problem is, when I put this back on, it has these, like, lamps. And there's one in the middle that sticks up. Let me grab one. Usually they give you like three backs, so you can make three distinct ships. I'm going to grab this one here. It's got the lamp right in the middle. And the problem is, this uh, little arm on the back doesn't sit flush once you have this back in place. So I've got to put the mass down all the way, and then this arm is going to sit on that middle lamp. So I just kind of got to get it all fit in place. I'm going to put that mast in. Now these masts, I'm already breaking this arm here. I put a little pressure because I was pushing down here, but that is putting a lot of pressure on the mast. So I'm going to... Uh, I, I might... Gosh, uh, these masts are not going to be easy to just insert and take out. So I think I'll probably wait on putting these in. I'm going to put this back one in simply because I need to see how it fits with the back on. And I got to push this down without damaging the arm any more than I did just now. The other ships, these masts went in pretty easy. But this one is a little stubborn. Okay, we got it in. And then we're going to take this and temporarily place it here. Again, not gluing it. That way I can manipulate it up and down. I'm going to trim this back piece. This happy little back piece. There we go. The bottom I botched up a little bit, but it's on the bottom. And I have yet to have anybody pick up the ship to look at it, <laughs> like to flip it over. I think most people are really uh, afraid to touch them because they, they do look pretty fragile, but they, they do hold up pretty good. Okay, so this, this is perfect the way it is. Um, I can see that this arm could come down a little bit more but once I have the back here in place and glued in, the arm sits above that middle lamp, if you can see what I'm talking about. Like, it just barely even touches it. So that's going to be a good fit. Good fit. And I'm going to leave that mast there. And I'm going to leave the other two masts off until we finish painting. Then I'll put them in place permanently and glue them in after that. So let's glue the back here on. Flip it over here. 
that glue just kind of flows everywhere. So it's going to dry very... Right now it's a glossy glue, but when it dries it has a nice matte kind of finish. It's not super glossy. And now I'm going to glue that arm in place because it's sitting right on that lamp and I think it's going to be just fine. And we're good. All right, give that a chance to glue and dry. And we put the little arm here. Now that is taking, oh, it is step three. But uh, there we go. Those actually kind of fit better than some of the other models. I'm kind of trying to look straight down. Those actually went in pretty good. It's like the bigger the model, the easier it is to get things to fit together. Imagine that. All right, and just because I'm a sucker for scale comparison, let me get my non-sailed. I got this frigate here. I didn't put the sails on yet. That's from the last, did I rig this? Yeah, I think I did a rigging video on this one. But if you can see, kind of side by side here, we now have a larger ship. It's slightly longer than the frigate. Well, actually quite a bit longer. Uh, it's taller. It does look a little bit fatter overall. The front of the frigate stops right about here, then you add a whole extra section on. And then we're going to put the bowsprit. So yeah, this this will be a much larger vessel. So great, that's going to make my son happy. He likes playing with the big ships. He's like, yeah, let's get some first rates in there. I got to wait on the first rates. They are a little more pricey. Okay, let's get that bowsprit. And that's, that's it. There's a back here uh, for like the windows and captain's quarters. So it's just a matter of picking which one you want to use. And you, you can mix and match them. So just because I cut here, I could use any of these. What I might do is I, I might just go straight across. You, you can totally mix and match, though, however you want. But I'm going to just go straight across. So we'll put that part on. Here is the bowsprit. Uh, like I said, the only thing I haven't decided on yet is the anchors, if I want to put those on. Okay, I don't like how close that is. My clippers are not getting in here the way I want. So I gotta manipulate all this around. Because I want to make sure I'm cutting the flashing the connection point and not the, the bowsprit itself. Okay, so that's off. We're gonna leave the anchors for a moment. Oh, I still got the figurehead to do. And then I have to decide about boats. If if I put boats on, I'll probably I'll put boats on these. I put boats on some of the frigates. I have boats I could put on the brigs. Um, so I'll go ahead and put some boats on, but I'll paint first and then attach these later. Paint them white, do the inside a little bit. I've actually seen, I don't do the bases, but I've seen some folks for other ships, they'll, they have the base down and they extend the base out a little bit and then they put a couple boats in the water and then run like a tow line connecting the boat so they're just towing the boats behind. Looks really cool. But I haven't decided on how I want to do like any kind of base or just leave the ships here. Um, the Old Dominion Games Workshop, they do clear bases for like their World War II ships and well, all their naval games and it, they're these clear bases and they have pre-put on there some wake lines for the ship. So I've thought about getting those and then if I did, I would put on some of these get like extra long bases and put like a couple, but I don't know, I just thought it looked kind of cool. But now let's pick a mast. Now we got several here and I'd had to put my head and face right in there to see what they are. So uh, here's the mermaid. Since this is the inaugural, I have a thing for mermaids and maids, but they don't have a maid on here. I have the maiden, so we'll do a mermaid. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I'm still debating on the anchors. Anchors I might put on, but I might paint them separate because if they're glued to the ship and it's sometimes hard to get in with the black, but if I paint the anchor separately and then attach it, that might make that a little easier. So that might be what we do. Yeah, someone asked if I paint these on the sprue. No, as you can see, I like to assemble the model first. The problem that I have with painting stuff on the sprue, and I see people do it, and it seems to work fine for them, but with me, because I'm so unskilled at this, when I cut the piece off, then I have unpainted parts where the model connected to the sprue, and I gotta go back and touch it up. So maybe that's not too bad because it gives you more control, especially if you, you know, you're holding this, keeps it very steady. Well, maybe I'll do that on one of these ships. Mostly, it's because if I don't paint it, I can still put the model on the table and play and then paint later. So that's probably, I bet you, that's probably why I uh, don't really paint these on the sprue because I want to play with the ship. If I don't have it painted, I'm still going to play. All right, let me clean this up. This is the windows on the back. And then we'll trim up the bowsprit and then bam. We'll attach those last pieces, and aside from the anchors, we'll be done. Uh, let's see, without any breaks or editing, 41 minutes. So that'd be about 45 minutes. And that's because I'm not a super fast modeler. I know some folks, they just cut, trim, assemble. Now that I've put this together, I think for the next one, what I'll do is actually cut all the pieces trim all the pieces and then just assemble it because I know how it fits. These kits are not complicated and I mean that in a great way. They're designed to be handled and played with so there is detail on them but it is not uh, fragile. I, I had some models from Zvezda that were game models but they had really flimsy parts because they were also meant to be scale models like in 20 millimeter for um, infantry pieces and stuff but then things were super fragile these I'm not saying are not fragile but you can tell that these are designed to be played with so even though you got the mass everything is still holds together really well alright so let's I got some stuff on there because it's upside down. Barnacles, I don't know. All right, here we go. Dry fit. I like this. This whole front area is designed for you to fit the bowsprit in here and hold it in place while you decide if it's level. So that's the big thing now is just trying to manipulate that so it looks level and straight. And uh, it does from this point of view and it's gonna fit and that's good because there's a nice gap between the bow sprit and the bow so I can fit threading under there but yet glue this so it holds in place great great design so drop some glue drop some glue right here and that will eventually all dry out yeah look at that yeah I'm like I said I'm gonna hold off on these masts uh, let's see which one's the bigger one I want to put it in there just so you can kind of see let me see how tough these are yeah these are all gonna be super snug so I'm just gonna barely set them in place so you kind of get a feel for how this looks I still gotta put the figurehead on there so like I said we're just putting these in ever so gently yeah these look great let's put that figurehead on here it's the mermaid if I hold this up it gets out of the light but that is so so tiny I don't know if you can really see the mermaid and the camera won't focus on it sorry but there is a mermaid on there and I'm gonna paint that to look like a mermaid. I'm gonna try to paint that to look like a mermaid. 
with no pasties. This will be a not safe for children. So I'll have to mark this video as not safe for kids. Of course that mermaid is going to be so small you'll never really be able to tell what it is. Sadly. Oh, we got to push all that down. And get everything. Yeah, that's probably over glued. Probably over glued at this point, but like I said, you paint it, it dries, then it's matte, not shiny, and it looks fine. So there's the figurehead. There, you got a figurehead on there. Looking like a ship. Not a boat. Now it says this back window piece, oh, goes along the middle. So I just got to figure out how to make that fit here. Oh boy. I'm looking at the picture and it says it goes like along the middle here but I think that might actually fit let me see if there's a picture okay well this is why I have to build these first to get a feel for what exactly are they trying to have me do here because I'm not seeing how okay this is gotta get that right over the center I bumped it the bow sprit so it's not quite where I want it to be. The glue is holding it in place, it just hasn't dried yet. Like I said, give it a couple hours and then this will all be like welded together. Okay, let me find a picture so I can see exactly how that back piece goes on. And they're not, oh, I dropped, oh, I forgot to mention this. More black thread. I was worried I'd have to buy some, but I still have a bunch on this bobbin that came with the starter kit, and then I still have a, a whole nother bobbin to play with. And I'm not showing anything that tells me how to put, ah, uh, yeah, here we go. That's what I needed. So I'm going to try and fit that across the middle properly. Uh, okay, so if you're putting this together, and you said, wow, how am I supposed to do that? Hopefully this gives you an idea. So that does go in the middle. Now, let me try, I got a couple, I keep bumping these masts. It does have a couple trim points here. Let me get those real quick. I thought I had them, but I think I missed them. Get that smooth. So this has a top and the bottom is open. Okay, that side I did. So what I'm thinking is the hole or the opening is going to go towards the bottom and this is going to fit in here kind of snug. Now this is the part I can't really show you because my fat fingers are in the way. And actually that might be a balcony. Oh, <gasps> it is a balcony. So that's actually going to fit Oh, perfect, perfect. It is a balcony. So the opening, and I don't know if you can see that, I'm going to glue that. That fits in perfectly. Boom, touch of glue, touch of glue, glue. All right. Yes, that is a balcony. Oh, now can you see that? So the opening goes on top. That just, it just popped in like perfectly when I kind of flipped it opposite of how I thought it should be. And now there's a balcony for the little people to come out the back of the captain's quarters and look at all the, the sea behind them, where they've been. Yeah, everything else is holding on pretty good. Yeah, so there you go. That is one constructed third rate ship there I'll put it on the side a little bit so you can look at it and again we'll put the frigate here just so you have a little bit of a, a size comparison hopefully you can see that um, 
I don't know, the camera looks a little, like, I, I can't tell if you can see the difference in size. But here in person, the third rate is definitely bigger. And that's going to be fun to get that rigged up. So very excited. And there you go. Uh, where are we at? 50 minutes to get this whole thing done. So we did an unboxing, built a ship. Anchors, like I said, I'll probably wait on the anchors and attach those last. I'll paint those separately and then glue them on just because uh, the way that they're going to fit on there, I think they'd be a little awkward to paint them while they were attached to the ship. And then I've got a lot of cannons to paint. Now the nice thing is a lot of these cannons are hidden inside the ship. So with the frigate, I had to paint down all the deck guns because they're, they're exposed. Pretty much all the, the deck cannons. Uh, well, there's like eight, ten. Let's see, one, eight, nine, eleven, twenty-two. This on top has two, five, eight. So of eight cannons on the top deck to had to paint. And that's why I take the mast off. It's a little easier to get in there and paint those guns. So three, six, eight. Yeah, and then the rest of these are luckily just kind of painting on the outside. But that, that's a lot more guns to paint. So, yes, that'll be fun to play with. Oop. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope, Hopefully that gives you an idea of what the kit is like. If you've been on the fence, uh, hopefully this will give you a little more information that you need to either get these or not get these. Uh, depending on the scale of gaming that you do, these will be rather large unless you have a large table. Even, you know, they're, they're bigger models. Uh, a friend of mine, he said he wished that they had had these when he started because he was getting the 11200 scale. These are 1700 scale. So when you see them on the table, they look great, but your movement scales and things like that might might make these a little awkward to use on smaller tables so you know just kind of keep that in mind but overall I am I think these are well worth the price so that's all I got for you thank you very much for tuning in and watching uh, I really appreciate you you know all the support that I've been getting I guess normally this is where you would plug patreon and things like that but I don't have patreon <laughs> so um, the, the best support is just, you know, continue watching and leave comments. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.